Hey, before we begin, I want to announce something I've never done before. A fan art contest. Use the hashtag, hashtag DemutedFanArt on Twitter to enter for a chance for your artwork to appear in my Halloween special. The only requirements are that you use elements or themes associated with the channel, such as the characters, or an inside joke of some kind. Also, since this is for the Halloween special, keep the season in mind. The deadline is October 30th, one day before Halloween. In the end, there will be five winners chosen, so be sure to enter. Thank you so much for the support, and on with the video. In the modern day, storytelling is as easy as typing a few words and click post. Boom! Today's schlock post is all about that time you threw up at a party, or how your best friend got a new truck, or how your boss is a real hard ass and he will probably fire you if he ever finds your secret account. Anyway, storytelling is very easy to do nowadays, but I'm not about to tell you how these schlock posts are necessarily worth talking about. Hell, one could make an argument that my channel isn't worth talking about. I review and theorize about horror games, primarily ones with a bunny in them. However, I also can appreciate that there are definitely some replies, comments, or posts that are worth reading and engaging with. And one kind of post I interact with regularly is the tweet. Twitter's method of posting is pretty much unmatched. It's the universal descriptor of how a forum posting website should handle formatting. Your first tweet can be whatever you want, even throw in a picture, and then others can comment on it. You can comment on your own, even start a string of your own replies and create a thread. It's built so that each singular tweet could spawn dozens of offshoot threads or branches. And occasionally, these threads are used to tell stories. Usually funny ones or just strings of shit posts. Very rarely do we get to see a thread, though, where the main theme is horror. Horror threads are a mostly untapped medium. I feel very few horror creators want to use Twitter as their primary venue for telling their story. Twitter is a website of links. Creators would rather have you following their YouTube or Patreon rather than their Twitter account. That's not to say Twitter creators don't exist, but for those who want to make a series or tell an ongoing story, Twitter often isn't the place it happens. But those threads do exist, and sometimes, they're some of the best horror you can find on the internet. And today, we're going to be discussing one of them. One that, in my opinion, may just bring about a new age of digital horror. This is the scariest Twitter thread I've ever read. The first tweet comes from... Arkisukis? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. For the ease of this video, I'll just be referring to them as Arch going forward. We'll definitely talk about what Arch does outside of this thread later, but let's start with the first post. Our dog has been barking and scratching up our back door every night. He's been doing this for days, so I sat with him last night to find the issue. I snapped a flash pic of the back door when he barked and captured this. Be very careful outside, because this does not look normal. Attached is the first image of the thread, showing... This. Its eyes are reflected against the light shining, and its face seems leathery, with a mane or fur of feathers surrounding it. With its long, pointed snout and eyes that seem to stare directly at the cameraman, we get a real sense of scale. Although its body seems to disappear into the dark just outside the light's glow, we can make out that it's absolutely huge. Arch is right. This doesn't look normal at all. In the immediate follow-up, Arch writes, Additionally, whatever it was fled after I photographed it. We haven't seen the animal since then. I live in the Chicagoland suburbs, so that's where you should beware of this thing. Nobody can identify it, and my family and I are frankly afraid to go outside now. Look out. So far, this thing has only appeared once and hasn't caused much trouble, other than freak arch out. But the next post comes the following day. Update on this animal. I'm having a garage sale, and one of my neighbors came over with his kids. I talked to them about the weird animal, and they have actually seen it too. One of the kids made this drawing depicting the animal. Cut the art some slack, he's only six. We're shown a drawing of the monster, what the mentioned kid calls Big Bird. This drawing actually tells us something new though, that being that it looks like there's two of them. One, the larger monster we saw the previous night, and one smaller one. Also among the bird and the bunny are these two blue figures who could be birds or something else entirely. It's unclear yet. It's here that Arch makes a decision to try to investigate a little further and try and capture a recording of it. In his next post, he provides a video and a photograph. In the video, all is dark, but something can be heard. A low, warbling, chirping sound, almost like a duck, but clearly coming from something larger. The photo as well shows us something new. We see the dog staring back at the camera, 
and in the far background the glowing eyes of the monster. By now, I'm sure you might be piecing together what this monster actually is, but I'll definitely leave that for the end of the thread. Instead, let's move on to the next tweet, which is when things start to finally get seriously dangerous. Update on the animal. I did something really stupid and left the back door completely unlocked for hours. I actually heard something hit the floor downstairs. When I looked, the chicken I bought from the store was missing, but I found the packaging outside through the open door. Attached are two pictures, one of the packaging on the ground and one of the open door. It seems like the monster may have gotten into the house through the unlocked door and had itself some dinner. Thankfully, it left. However, later that same night, we get a new tweet to the thread. Arch seemingly spooked types, the handle just fucking jiggled. Wait. The next night we get a very interesting tweet, one I couldn't wrap my head around before until I remembered the kids drawing from earlier. Okay, I zoomed in through the window and flashed it again. It's opening its mouth and turning around behind the woven couch and patio wall. I tried to get a video, but it fled again. Attached is a picture of the monster hiding behind a patio couch, although this one is much smaller. Maybe this is just a trick of the light, but this to me looks like it could be that smaller monster from the drawing. Maybe the larger one's baby? That it's definitely supposed to be a bird, and Arch describes it opening its mouth and turning around a lot, makes me think that it's the baby waiting to be fed by the mother. In fact, the mother's not far behind based on the next two tweets. It's making its way in front of my kitchen windows. I'm gonna try and sneak a picture. Got one, but it was weirdly easy. The thing just stood completely still with its neck craned up, unblinking. I think as I was studying it, it was doing the same, like it was fascinated with my light or something. It is a little over 5 feet tall if I had to guess. Attached this time is the clearest picture we've had of the monster yet, with its long neck and very pointed snout. I think it's obvious to most people by now that what's happening is that Arch is being cased out. This big bird is looking for food, and it knows that Arch's house is a place to get some. So when it's studying his light, it's either trying to figure out a way past it, or it's trying to get Arch to see it, willingly. Why? Well, let's keep going. Something started to scream and yelp in the front yard. I am thoroughly freaked out by the noises, so I'm going up and locking my door. The noises have stopped. I don't want to go outside to see what the commotion was. I should seriously invest in security cameras or a drone. After doing a decent amount of digging, it doesn't seem like there is anything like this animal. My community may have something entirely foreign to deal with here. I do know that it has feathers, is smart, and is nocturnal, but apart from this I'm in the dark. Any ideas? Still no idea what it is. I do know that it is not afraid of people like most wild animals are. Something weird happened too that made me shut my bedroom window. There's a god-awful smell coming from outside and it wafted into the house. I think it's a skunk. Maybe unrelated though. The next update we get comes from presumably the following day. I want you to remember those last couple posts I read, especially the one about something screaming and yelping in Arch's front yard. Because in this post, Arch finds evidence of what may have happened the previous night. Update on the animal. So I was looking for tracks of the creature and couldn't seem to find anything. I guess it's light on its feet. But I did find a clump of some animal matter. This seems to be some kind of pellet, like the owl pellets I dissected as a kid, but way bigger. Arch decides to dissect the pellet, finding a number of bones including a turtle cranium inside. For those who may not know, bird pellets like this come from birds essentially coughing up the parts of an animal they can't digest, such as fur or bones, which seems to be what this monster had done. This next post also sets us up for something even wilder. Even though Arch has been dealing with one type of monster as is, it turns out that he may be dealing with more than one type. I have not found any other pellets, but there actually are some tracks in the backyard. I had only checked the front. Some very heavy ones and a single cleaner one. Could this just be a deer track? The heavy tracks, if Arch is right about the size, would almost definitely have come from the window monster, as I'll be calling it. But this second track? Not recognizable at first. However, it's when we get to the next post that we actually might have an idea of what's going on. Okay, so I spotted a different animal but it is just as bizarre as the first. It looks like some kind of little mutant bird. There was more than one of these, and this one here was catching flying bugs. They move quickly and are very skittish. This one has been fighting with other birds over something. Should I go outside and see what it is? I figure it should be safe right now since the patio lights are up and running. We're introduced to the second type of creature, which I'll be calling the skittish monsters. These little guys jump and hop around, which is why I think they'd only leave the one track. 
These little guys also seem less harmful than the window monsters since they don't pay any attention to Arch. However, what Arch discovers next is horrifying. You know how the skittish monsters were fighting over something? The realization of what that something is started to rise to Arch, whose next tweets went as follows. Guys, what the fuck? I watched the smaller animals tug at the object and blood just started to pour out of it profusely. It's turned on its side now behind the pot. Also, the patio lights bugged again and now it's all dark. I had to vomit. Sorry. Give me a few minutes to call the police. In an update, Arch finally reveals what the object was, and it's a horrifying realization. Update. There is a child's fucking foot on my patio. Attached is a picture of the foot still in its shoe, with blood pouring down the side of it. But what happened here? What could have done this to a child? Well, Arch then double-checks the bird pellet he found earlier. Inside, he now finds a plastic button off an article of clothing. The window monster ate something that button was attached to, and most likely whoever was inside of it. For Arch, though, things don't get any better. The foot's gone before the police arrive, probably dragged off by the skittish monsters from earlier, who it seems are scavengers, cleaning up after the window monster feeds. Arch then decides to warn his neighbors about what had happened, but they aren't answering the door and their lights are all on. However, this is Arch's next tweet. My neighbors did not answer the door. I don't know why, but their lights are all on. I hope they're okay. I did find this crumpled on the sidewalk, though. It looks like another drawing made by their little boy. I seriously hope he isn't going up and feeding those animals. The drawing shows the boy feeding hot dogs to the window monster, or actually, one of two window monsters. It seems that the baby from earlier is gone, and instead there are now two adults. Also in this drawing, we now clearly see a third kind of monster. Winged ones with long, pointed beaks, and wings that connected from the tips of their arms and the outsides of their feet. For the sake of consistency, I'm calling these things wing monsters, although I'm sure you know what they actually are. Something is on the roof. I think whatever was on the roof left because the scratching sounds up there stopped. Something moved in the backyard again, though. It was a long, dark mass. I think it was the large animal from before. I'm kind of horrified right now. It definitely seems like the window monster is ramping up the aggression, as it not only takes to Arch's roof, but also starts displaying intelligence. Namely, in this next post, Arch shows a video of a trail of feathers being left in his yard, right outside his door. To me, I think this is meant to be the window monster luring Arch away. This is even backed up later, since when Arch does not fall for the trap, the feathers disappear. But you know what? We haven't heard these monsters for a bit, how about more sound? This time, Arch describes them as vocalizing outside his kitchen window. The best way to describe it as long, disturbing, and almost resembling singing, mixed with the chirps now are long hissing sounds, which definitely disturbed me my first time hearing this audio. I hear someone talking outside, but something's not right with their voice. Should I take a look? Arch describes someone talking, but it not sounding right. Although he asks for advice here, it seems like he decided to look. However, when he got outside, he must have seen something and decided to come back in. His next post is this. Whatever was on my roof never fucking left. I'll try to record the voice when I hear it again. This thing on my roof is definitely different from anything else, though. It's spindly. It can go fuck itself. This is most likely one of the wing monsters we saw in the drawing earlier on, considering it's spindly. The attached image doesn't show much other than it was on his roof and could see him when he took the picture. Also seems he encountered something a little less haunting. This weird bat on his door, I'll call it bat monster, why not? Things seem to be ramping up on this night. Arch describes how he's alone in the house without even his dog. But then things go from nervous to dangerous. The next video is more audio, but this time we can hear that sort of wrong talking that Arch described earlier on.
I think this audio disturbs me a lot more than the previous examples because it's very close to human speech, but also just far enough off that it can't be described as human. It sounds more like something pretending to be human, which is what Arch concludes is happening. He believes they're trying to lure him outside, but he won't take the bait. Obviously, I'm not going anywhere right now. But then we get confirmation of there being two window monsters. According to Arch, that recording of the fake voice was taken in his kitchen near the window there. But when he goes back to the living room, he captures this picture. The tweet reads, Animal update. My heart sank to the fucking floor. There are 100% at least two of the larger animals. I just walked away from the kitchen where the first one was talking and turned the corner into my family room and see the second one outside the window, motionless. Take a look. But this is when Arch's bad night turns into an actual nightmare. He decides to spend the night in the basement, using a dumbbell as a weapon. When he grabs his phone charger, though, he begins to hear doorknobs jiggling everywhere in the house. My phone is at 3% right now. I'm in the crawl space right now, hiding behind bins of Christmas decorations. I heard glass shattering upstairs and thuds, which is why I'm tucked away. If I don't make it, you stay safe. This could be it, and I'm so fucking scared. Initially, this is where the thread had ended, and when I decided to make a video covering it. However, in the time since then, more has been added to the story. So, let's continue. First off, obviously Arch escaped. He managed to get out of a window in the basement and hide out in his car, where he also charged his phone. It's then we get an animal update with something new. Animal update. So my neighbor's screened in porch is trashed, and there's just the weirdest looking animal thing in there. It saw me, but it isn't doing anything really. Seems shy. Look at this fucking thing though. What the hell is happening here? This is a new monster, who I'll call the Crest Monster, since it has this large crest shape connecting to its head. It also seems like Arch's neighbors, the same ones who lost their six-year-old son, may have not survived the night themselves if this was what was waiting for them on their porch. But then we get probably the most surprising piece of this story yet, at least to me. That being that something killed one of the window monsters, decapitating it and spreading feathers around. Arch doesn't know what could have killed it, but he's terrified. Whatever this new guy is, he also seems to immediately pick up on the whole food chain thing here, and starts making his own monstrous noises. It's dark outside and the animal screaming is back, but there is a new very strange noise. It's very deep and drawn out, sounds nothing like the others. Additionally, whenever I hear it, the crickets stop chirping. This monster currently goes completely unexplained in the thread, and I can't really place its noises. It almost sounds like a whale or a plane taking off. Whatever it is, it sounds wildly different than the chirping and faux human speak of the window monster. And this one is not spotted by Arch like the others had been. Arch decided to go back inside, but then decides to go to his car instead when something starts pawing at his laundry room. He then finds a deer with a missing antler trying to get inside his house, but he's worried about it being targeted by the monsters. The frightened deer stared at him, trying to get him to open up, but it seems like it just turned and ran when he wouldn't let it. Whatever is out there is apparently strong enough to break a deer's antler and scare them badly enough that they would try to get into a human's house for safety. Our final message is another audio-based one, confirming the existence of still another window monster. I just heard a shit ton of chaos in the bushes and shit right outside the kitchen window, and there's a lot of noise. Something crashed and was just wailing. IDK what it is exactly, but I know that one of the big bird things is sitting out there as well. Here, listen to this. The wailing, to me at least, sounds like the deer Arch had just met, and it seems like the window monster may have gotten to them. And that is unfortunately where the story ends for now at least. Seriously, no big climax or anything, but hey, maybe we'll get one down the line. I'll definitely be linking the thread in this video so you can check it out as it goes on. First up, I need to be transparent with you. 
this is a digital horror thread about dinosaurs. Yes, dinosaurs. Arch is a paleo artist, meaning they designed dinosaurs. The window monster is actually a giant raptor, which Arch had designed as a mask. This is why it's only ever seen from the neck up. What makes Arch and others like him interesting to discuss is that they do their best to stick to what dinosaurs would have really looked like, which, as it turns out, works great in a horror setting. Instead of Jurassic Park's infamously dramatized velociraptors, which actually more closely resemble Utah raptors, we get these more authentic, much more bird-like versions of dinosaurs that have their own tricks and gimmicks. By far the best part about this thread to me anyway, was listening to all the creepy animal vocals Arch had recorded, including the not speech. But the whole reason I decided to cover Arch's thread here was to explain why I think Twitter is a viable platform for horror stories like these. In fact, not just Twitter. Blue Sky, Tumblr, all sorts of platforms like this could be great for this kind of ongoing horror story. In fact, just over the last week or so since I began this journey, we've seen so many users trying to do exactly what Arch did, using realistic dinosaur props or making their own artwork as sort of fan-made continuations of the thread. It's been really interesting watching this little community start to grow, but it's still in its infancy. If Arch makes any smart move in the future, it should be giving the series a name so that it can maintain a consistent fan base. As it stands, that's where this video hits its end, but what an absolutely fun time it's been. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my other content. I cover a lot of analog and digital horror, as well as generally review games and other horror media. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.